engines now firing up at maximum thrust. And liftoff for the 500th time from Gagarin's start, a rocket roaring into the air. Sergei Volkov, Andreas Mogensen, and Idine Avatov on their way to the International Space Station. Reports good stage for uh, good first stage performance. The Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from those four strap on boosters and the single core engine. First stage of the Soyuz was about 68 feet in length, 24 feet in diameter, burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds into the flight. seconds into the flight. Roll pitch and yaw are on nominal. Copy. The crew is doing well. Everything's in order on board. Copy. And you can see the sun peeking in now. The launch route has been jettisoned. Copy. Can you confirm L5 and Air 13? And third stage separation Command confirmed. A bit of a kick in the pants for the we'll crew members the on board, but... Continuing with control. Insertion. Getting good reports on vehicle stability. A thumbs up and a wave there from Kazakh cosmonaut Idin Amatov making his first flight into space today. Seconds into the flight. 190 seconds since liftoff. The Soyuz traveling in excess of 4,700 miles per hour. So the Soyuz crew was awakened at about 2.37 p.m. Central Time today, which is roughly about nine hours prior to the launch. The crew members then participating in all the final pre-launch activities, as is tradition with all of these crews. Before departing for the launch pad, all three crew members autographing the doors of the Cosmonaut Hotel in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, where they spend their final days in quarantine right before the launch. Again, this is the first time to sign the doors for Mogensen and Imbatov, but Volkov himself, uh, a veteran space flyer, making his third flight to the International Space Station. Uh, this will be his third signature on that door. And the three crew members representing three different space agencies okay, with this everyone. launch today, both the uh, Russian Federal Welcome Space Agency, you. Roscosmos, the European Space Agency, ESA, and Coscosmos, the Kazakh Federal Space Agency. Then receiving a uh, traditional breath blessing from a Russian Orthodox priest. Uh, the priest also typically okay, blessing uh, the rocket napkin? itself a day or two before the launch. No, 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 uh, and no any more. lucky media members who happen to be out there. And then at around 5.37 p.m. Central Time today, the crew departed the Cosmonaut Hotel and made their way down uh, the traditional song playing in the background for all of these walkouts. Typically uh, joined by uh, any friends, family, and well-wishers, and also program guests and other VIPs there to attend the launch. They then uh, board a bus for the ride over to the integration and suit-up facility over at uh, what's known as Building 254 on the Baikonur Cosmodrome. So departing from the town of uh, Baikonur itself out onto the Cosmodrome territory. You see it again. Bye bye. Bye. Again, this took place uh, just a little over five hours ago at roughly 5.37 p.m. Central Time. The crew departing their rooms at the Cosmonaut Hotel and boarding onto a bus before heading out to the integration and suit-up facility, I'm giving some uh, final waves to folks there uh, at the Cosmonaut Hotel. And the crew arriving at that integration and suit-up facility, also known as Building 254, at about 6.22 p.m. Central Time today. 
each of the crew member undergoing each of the crew members undergoing uh, their final medical exams and then uh, getting suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits. As you can see, uh, the white suits being assisted by uh, the suit engineers down there in Baikonur. Once they're uh, suited up, the suits are pressurized uh, just to ensure the integrity of all of their seals, uh, make sure that they're flight ready. Uh, the suit up activities beginning at around 7.07 .07 p.m. Central Time, uh, which is just four and a half hours prior to liftoff. And you can see veteran cosmonaut Sergei Volkov there in the background, Andreas Mogensen, the Danish astronaut representing the European Space Agency on this flight today, being uh, suited up earlier uh, this evening uh, or the early morning over there in Baikonur. And then the third and final crew member for this evening being suited up earlier, Idin Amatov from the Kazakh uh, Space Agency. This will also be his first time into space. Two rookies on this space flight. And the three crew members will wear these Soka launch and entry suits for exactly what they're named after, launch and entry. Basically. Of course. Ah. Now, so we're done, we can undock. And so at this point, they head into a room to uh, do those air pressure checkouts. Again, each of the suits, uh, the crew members going into a mock up. So you see one by one and having their suits pressurized just to. Uh, ensure that they have a uh, tight seal and are flight ready. And while this is happening, uh, once they uh, get their suit checked out, they're able to uh, head over to the protective pane of glass uh, in place to help maintain their quarantine, uh, to speak to various officials from their home space agencies, and also uh, getting a chance to talk to uh, friends and family. This uh, one of the last, uh, or the last chance for most, uh, for the crew to talk with everyone prior to heading out to the launch pad. Also getting a chance to relax a bit while going through these leak checks.
And who is the commander of the vehicle? You're going to work until March? All the best. Waving farewell to everyone as they walk down the uh, tarmac to once again load up onto the buses. Walking down as they'll be seated in their Soyuz spacecraft uh, following this as they are right now uh, as we await the launch. Saluting the members of the Russian State Commission. Chairman of the Intergovernmental Commission on behalf of the crew. The report is accepted. Have a good trip. Okay, turn around. Turn around, gentlemen. Good luck, Andy. Three crew members boarded their bus at about 8.37 p.m. Central Time, riding it on over from building 254 to launch pad number one. Drive typically takes about 25 minutes, and they arrived at the pad at 8.59 p.m. Central Time. ready for lunch. Hold on a second. Uh, let's take pictures. Hold on to me so I don't divert from this path. members wave goodbye at the pad and then board the elevator for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket in order to get into that Soyuz capsule. At this point, they've been on board for about an hour and a half now. Soyuz rocket, as you can see behind them, billowing oxygen was fueled about three hours prior to the scheduled liftoff. Final elevator ride up to the capsule. The three crew members ready to load in to the Soyuz. Well, this flight turns out uh, doesn't strike me any different than all the other ones I've been to. It's uh, it's fascinating to watch our Russian colleagues prep a vehicle for launch, uh, get the crew ready, uh, get them in the Soyuz, and and uh, see the Soyuz safely get them to orbit. Um, and you're always excited when they get there safely to orbit and uh, look forward to their arrival on station. And it's always very, very uh, um, heartwarming just to know that they've made it safely to low Earth orbit and uh, they're on their way to station. And uh, it seems as many times as I've done this, it, it always feels exactly the same. There's a sense of relief when they get there, uh, excitement before, you, before they launch, uh, and, uh, and quite a bit of excitement when they get to ISS. Well, the station's in great shape. I'm I'm very happy to say um, the the vehicle is is uh, in in fantastic shape. We've got good spares on board, good logistics on board. We're doing fascinating research. Uh, perhaps uh, one of the uh, things I'm most proud of is that we've managed now to get the commercial uh, users to start coming to ISS, and that's starting to to flourish as well. So. 
uh, in this particular time, uh, the vehicle's ready to go. It's ready to go at least another 10 years, if not longer. Uh, and it'll, it'll continue to support us uh, as long as uh, uh, I think we'll, we'll need her in low Earth orbit. Again, my initial thought is just what an amazing international mission to see the, the Danish astronaut, the Russian astronaut, and the Kazakh all going to the International Space Station to join up with our crews and to meet with the six crew members on orbit. So what a, what a great start. What a way to really showcase what an international endeavor we're in, to see these three partners participate in this activity and for me to be with them. This was the first flight for the Danish. was really special to see the excitement in their eyes, to see how excited they were about this launch, to see their astronaut doing the things that maybe we see as commonplace. They saw it new and fresh. And to catch their excitement and to see what's going on, it really highlights the wonderful international aspect that the space station brings really to the world. Again, I think these countries working together internationally and figuring out ways to get past differences, to understand different ways of doing engineering, and not one is better than the other, but actually blending them together for this common achievement of building this magnificent facility in space, and then not only building it, but now utilizing it to do research is just phenomenal. So when I think about Space Station, clearly the international involvement and the way it's brought countries and peoples around the world together in a research activity is just absolutely phenomenal. So I have seen several launches, but you see this is the first launch, whereas I, as a Director General of ESA, have some direct responsibility. And I feel really it's uh, warming up my heart. I see this uh, European astronaut of Danish nationality with his crewmates in the small uh, Soyuz capsule flying to the International Space Station. It's just great. It was a great experience and, you know, it touches you uh, both on the inside and the outside when so much power is launched uh, in so few seconds. So it was a great personal experience for me and also very nice that it went so well. Well, for as me as a person, of course, I'm very happy for Andreas, Andreas Mogensen uh, because uh, it's a big life experience for him. As a minister, it's important that Denmark uh, can do business in space and we are now represented by a Dane, but also for our companies at home and our uh, students that have an interest in uh, nature and science, this is a very important uh, event.